Jesus. 
Saturated with your love Intoxicated from above Enjoying being here with you Meeting as old friends often do I enjoy this time that we're alone
We would like to warmly welcome you to our Good Friday service. And as we enter the sacred space together, it's a time of remembering. Remembering the betrayal, the death, the burial of Jesus. It's a time of remembering the love and the longing of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Where Jesus, for the love of his Father, obeyed even unto death. And where our Trinity God, the longing to be reconciled with us, spared nothing, gave everything so that we would be reconciled with Him. We'd love to welcome our local congregations as we meet together, um, the East Congregation, the South Congregation, as well as our international congregations. Those that join us regularly, those that are perhaps with us for the first time. We also want to remember our missionaries across the world that are also in lockdown at this time and situations are tough. But today we are remembering, we are remembering Jesus, our Savior. I do just want to remind you if you want to follow updates or announcements, please have a look on our websites or on our local platforms, you would be so welcome just to get up to date, catch up um, on these platforms. I've invited Pastor Sichlik Lamini, one of our local pastors, to come and share a thought. He had a thought out of Hebrews chapter two, and we love to hear your, the way that you address us, the way that you speak. We just recognize the anointing on your life. Sichlik, God bless you, thank you. And just the thought that I have in my heart is a thought I believe that the Father, it comes rather from the heart of the Father for someone. And the thought goes, beyond this pain, whatever pain it is that you are facing right now, there is a gain. 
ngale kwa lobusungu obegene nabo kukona ubuhle obegelwe kona and so i just want to encourage you in the spirit of hebrews uh, chapter 12 as pastor pen referred to earlier which says let us fix our eyes on to the lord jesus christ the author and the finisher of our faith who for joy set before him he endured the cross that pain of the cross and so whoever you are wherever you are watching from right now the father wants you to know he wants you to take a heart and look beyond what you are going through right now by fixing your eyes on Jesus ngakoke asibekise amehlo ethu thina sonke ku Kristo u Jesu ngoba siyazi ukuthi ngale kuphlungu kukhona ubuhle asidumise uNkulunkulu let's worship him
that I hide I think upon your sacrifice Jesus Naramaya Kiaramaya Karamaya When I think upon your sacrifice Jesus Christ I think upon your sacrifice You became
Just as we continue in this place of worship, um, Pastor Louis is going to be facilitating communion in a short while. So as you continue to worship, perhaps if you could find some elements somewhere in the house, in the kitchen, um, something to celebrate this space of communion together across the globe. Thank you so much. Wash me. 
Good morning, family. How are you doing? I trust that you are experiencing the Lord's presence and His grace with you and that you are doing really well. I've done a lot of gardening by now, a lot of fixing things around the house, 
my list is done. So I trust that you've also got to some extra things, and, but that, you've, that you're just actually experiencing this time, even some of the good of this. It's Good Friday. It's such a privilege to come together. It's been our habit over the years that the Hatfield East and Hatfield South congregations come together and we have a time of communion on, a, on, on Good Friday. And uh, while we're not doing it on site, we're still doing it online today. So I want to say welcome to every family, every member of every church, every person visiting us on, on this platform, people from all over the world. We want to join with the rest of our global family that today remember the fact that Jesus died on the cross for us. And we're going to have communion just now, so I trust that you've got some elements ready there and that you can share communion with us. If you don't, that's okay. Just in your heart participate as we share communion. Whenever we come to Good Friday, it's a day for us to remember. It's a day for us to look back and to remind ourselves of what Jesus did on the cross and on what happened and why the crucifixion is so important in our lives. I want to take you to a, a little bit of the story of what happened in the build-up of the crucifixion. And uh, you remember that Jesus, in that week before the crucifixion, he uh, had a, what we call the Last Supper, where he gathered his friends, his disciples, who he's journeyed with for more than three years. He knew them intimately and he knew them well. And he wanted to have a last meal with them and, and share some things with them in preparing them for the time that was ahead. So, so they organized a venue, the, a, a room where they could come, and they met. And you remember that Jesus washed their feet during that time. And, and then they had a meal together. And they laughed and they shared together. But at some point in the end of the evening, when after they ate and everybody was a bit relaxed and they were sort of reclining, Jesus, it says, his mood changed. And I want to pick up in that part of the story and just apply it to us in, in a way today. In uh, John 13, verse 27 and verse 30 to 31 is the verses I'm going to read. And I'd like you to go there with me as we read what happened in that moment in, the, in that room when they were after they had the meal. It says that Jesus got troubled in verse 21. It says that he, he suddenly started, real, he, he, his mood changed, that, that he, he was now thinking about what was coming. And, and a big part of what he thought about first in what the next days had was the fact that, that somebody was going to betray him. So he said in that meal, right at that moment, he said, one of you is going to betray me. I mean, what a thing to say in a group of friends. Imagine if you were in a group of friends and, and, and somebody says that in, in, in your group, that somebody's going to stab me in the back. Everybody started looking around and saying, who is this? And they started wondering, who would do such a thing? How can Jesus say that? Surely not one of them that, that are so close to each other would, would dare do something like that. It surely wouldn't be in their hearts to do something. So Peter looked at John, the disciple that was closest to Jesus. Both at that moment was he closest to Jesus, but he generally always was closest to Jesus because he was the one that, that Jesus loved, the scripture says. And, and he, sort of, he sort of just said to him, hey, John, won't you ask Jesus, who, who is he talking about? Who's going to do this? And, and John, you know, we don't know if he actually asked the question or Jesus overheard, but then Jesus answered. And uh, he said, I'm going to take the bread in the cup now. And to, to the one whom I dip the bread in the cup and give it to, he'll be the one that will betray me. And so he did that and he, and he gave it to Judas Iscariot. And that's when we pick up in verse 27. It says, when Judas had eaten the bread, this bread that Jesus dipped and gave to him, Satan entered him, into him. Perhaps that means the last bit of reserve that he had to follow through with his plan. The, the, the last hope there was that he may not do this, it, it, it disappeared and he steeled himself and he gave himself over to the plan of, of the betraying, betraying Jesus. Then Jesus told him, Hurry and do what you're going to do. So Judas left at once, going out into the night. As soon as Judas left the room, Jesus said, The time has come for the Son of Man to enter into his glory, and God will be glorified because of him. Just think of that, these little words that the, the writer John captures for us. So Judas left at once, going out into the night. You see, whenever we leave Jesus, 
we go into the night. Whenever we step away from God, we go into the darkness. Jesus said that he is the light of the world. So when you move away from Jesus, you're moving away from light and into darkness. Judas made a choice that day that he was going to walk away from Jesus. And that meant that he would go into the darkness. Not only, only the darkness of that night, but the darkness of sin, the darkness of rebellion against God. And he went on his path. He went towards his plan and his plan and his focus was to get money. That was the thing at that point that he made his decision about. He said, I want money. So he betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. That was where he was going. He was going down that path into the darkness of sin, of rebellion against God. And, it's, and in that moment, we see a bit of us, all of us in him. I think actually he represents us really well. He became like the first Adam. That when Adam, Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the garden, they also walked into the darkness, walked away from God. And it's been the story of every human being. We're born in, on that path of going away from God, going into the darkness. But Jesus came. Jesus came so that we don't have to go down that path, but that we can go down another path. The path that has become available to us is the path of Jesus. Because we read the story further, that after Judas had left, Jesus shared some things with the disciples, and, and he spoke to them, and, and the rest of John 13 and John 14, he gives them instructions, and he teaches them. But then in verse 31 of John 14, we read the following. But I will do what the Father requires of me, so that the world will know that I love the Father. Come, let's be going. Then Jesus went down the path that he was going to take. Judas went down a path into the darkness. Jesus went down in a path towards the Father. While Judas was going away from the Father, Jesus was going towards the Father. He said, I will do what the Father requires of me. And, and his path physically was the path that he took towards the Garden of Gethsemane. Judas' path was the path towards the Pharisees and towards collecting the money. Jesus' path was the path towards Gethsemane. And you remember what happened at Gethsemane, where Jesus prayed the prayer. He, he felt the weight, the trauma of what is about to happen, and the, and, the, uh, and the crucifixion and the pain and the suffering. And so he knelt down and he prayed and he cried out to the Father. And he said these words in Luke 22, verse 42. Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. How Jesus went the opposite way of Judas. Judas went the way of doing what he wanted, looking after himself. Jesus went the way of saying, I'm going to do what the Father wants, no matter what it asks of me. And that's the path that Jesus has made available to us. That we can join him and we can go down that path. We don't have to go the path of betraying God. We don't have to go into the darkness. We can go with Jesus, the light towards the Father. And that's literally what Jesus did for us. When he died on the cross, he, he, he opened up for us the possibility of stepping into the light out of the darkness. That we no longer have to be sons and daughters of the darkness and of the kingdom of darkness, but we can now be sons and daughters of the kingdom of light because Jesus is the light. And He shines the light towards the Father and, and He has made available to us to go on that path. So today when we have communion together, when, when we share the elements, it's a symbolism of that we are joining with Christ. But it's also a very powerful act. You remember Dan Back has taught us about how, how powerful communion is and, and how powerful it can be that when we say, Lord, when I take these elements today, I am joining you and I am trusting that you have done a perfect work so that I don't have to be in the path of darkness anymore and going into the darkness and into the betrayal, but that I have been set free to go down the path towards the Father, the path of light. So why don't you just now get ready your elements. Get them. I've got some elements. 
And I want to break communion with you today, and we're going to do that just now. The, the elements of the bread that represents the body of Christ. The elements of the, of the cup that represents the blood of Christ. So have you got your elements ready? Won't you gather around? If you're with others, gather around with them, your family, kids, everybody. You, you're more than welcome to have communion with us. You don't have to be a member of our church. You don't have to. All you have to do is to, to be a child of, the, of, of God. If you've never given your life to Jesus, if you've never said, Lord, help me, give, make it possible for me to not go down the path of darkness, but to go on the path of light, won't you right now make that decision so that you can share communion with us? If you're gathering with other people, just tell them, I want to be a follower of Christ. Won't you give everybody in the room an opportunity if they want to? If you're on your own, won't you drop a comment on our social media platforms right now or send an email to talk to us at Hatfield and just say, I want to give my heart to Jesus. Just, and we've got a team of people that want to pray with you. They want to connect with you. But before we break the elements, we want you to break the elements with us. Won't you just get ready to do that? In fact, can I, can I pray a prayer with you so that we can share the elements together? Won't you just pray this prayer with me right now? If you, if you on your own or even if you're with others, can I ask you, I'm going to pray this prayer slowly. Pray this prayer sentence by sentence after me. Here comes the prayer. Just say, dear Lord Jesus, I recognize that I'm on the path of darkness away from you. But today I choose to turn around and to join you, Jesus, on the path towards the Father. I, I want to step into your light. I ask you to forgive my sin. Forgive me from walking away from you. Thank you that you forgive my sin. And that now you make me your son and your, or your daughter. And that I can be on the path of life and do the will of the Father. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Again, please, if you've prayed that prayer, let us know. Well, if you're a follower of Jesus, then won't you get ready? Let's break the elements together. In 1 Corinthians 11, verse 26, Paul writes and he says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. He died for us. But one day He's coming back to fetch us, to be with Him for eternity. Lord, we thank you for your body that was given to us. Your body that was spent on that cross. And to together today, as we eat of this element of your body, we do it to remember you. Let's eat the body, this bread that represents the body of Christ together. Won't you get ready to just partake of this grape juice or whatever you're using to represent the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus was poured out for our sins to be forgiven so that we can be washed clean, that we can become like Him, clean and pure, that the darkness can be washed away so that we can live in the light. Lord, we want to thank You for Your blood that was spilt that you chose this. You took the cup that the Father required so that, you, so that we can be forgiven, so that we can become children of the Father. Thank you for your blood that was given to us. We love you, Lord Jesus. Won't you partake? I want to thank you for joining us today. I want to thank you for loving each other and loving the Lord during this time. May His favor and His grace be upon you. Please, again, can I remind you, if you made a decision to serve Christ today, it would be so great if you can connect with us. We'll, we want to just be in connection with you and also help you during this time and include you in our communication. May the Lord bless you today as you continue on in this time of the lockdown. May He strengthen you. And remember, Sunday morning, 
930, we're going to be together for Resurrection Sunday. It's going to be a feast. We're going to have a great time as we're going to celebrate together the life that we have been given in Christ. So join us on Impact Radio and on our social media platforms, 930 on Sunday morning. May the Lord bless you and keep you and make His face to shine upon you. We love you. See you Sunday. We hope this broadcast has inspired and encouraged you. During these 21 days of lockdown, let's keep growing in our relationship with the Lord and let's make sure we stay connected. Apart from our Sunday broadcasts, we've created two opportunities to facilitate this connection. Firstly, join us online for a daily devotional live from Louis Lounge every morning at 9 a.m. Visit our website for links to the social media platforms that will connect you to this journey. Secondly, I'll be facilitating a time of worship and prayer on Facebook Live every Wednesday evening at 7.30 p.m. Join me as we sit at the feet of the Lord in worship and unite in prayer for our nation and for each other. Oh, and the song you're currently hearing comes from one of our homegrown albums titled Fresh Bread. Visit iTunes, Spotify or Amazon MP3 to download or stream this and other homegrown albums. Search Hatfield Christian Church on these platforms. Stay home, stay safe and stay connected. Forever Jesus Forever Jesus I am yours I am yours Forever Jesus Forever Jesus I am yours I am Jesus